Welcome to the Freelance Tribe. Here we talk with skilled freelancers about their professional journey. Stay tuned for real life experiences to learn and actionable steps to take to improve your freelancing career. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9am.works. And my guest is Pelin Kazak Bagatur, a freelance lead product and UX designer and a design strategist who is passionate about designing with and for well being. And today we'll talk about the well being of freelancers and how the way you work can support the way you live. So welcome, Pelin. Thank you, Yuri. Happy to be here. Super happy to talk to you, especially as you've been um, called here by one of the people, one of the listeners. And it's it's the way I like the most when, you know, someone reaching out, oh, there is this amazing person. You have to reach out mm-hmm. to them. You have to talk to them. So let's have this conversation today with you. And please tell me. So you've had two long sabbaticals uh, like two months long, time. Yeah. not super long but like longer <laughs> yeah. than usual and <laughs> tell me a backstory of each one yeah sure so um the first one was in 2019 it's been quite a while now uh but at that point i was working as an in-house design manager in germany at zalando and i had a nervous system issue like something about my health happened And there was no cure in Western medicine, unfortunately. And I was lucky that a doctor told me, maybe check Eastern healing methodologies. And at that point, I wasn't at all into spirituality or Eastern healing or anything. But I went back to work. I asked, when can I take some time off? I'm going to East. (laughs) And they said, this time you can take like two months off and That's how I found myself in Thailand at a yoga teacher training. Uh, But this is, of course, long story short, uh, you know, like I was, I had like so many, like I asked people for their uh, advice and had a meditation teacher and she actually recommended me that place in Thailand, uh, which is called the sanctuary. And again, long story short, in two weeks, my pain was gone. Hmm. in two weeks time and yeah then what happened there (laughs) so I simply learned this whole idea about how to manage our breathing how to meditate what is good for the nervous system what kind of moments and also got to get to know myself a little bit better and I think the combination of all of those but um, breathing and breathing um consciously and with purpose and meditation i think those two actually healed me initially how did you switch from this kind of like western medicine to eastern medicine so uh why i'm asking because you know like there are some people who like yeah i know i i don't i don't believe in this like all this meditation breathing yeah no 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 so how did you switch how did you change your mind or yeah. maybe did you have some uh, already some predisposition for uh, Eastern medicine part? Not at all. And I was fully skeptic and even laughing about it. <laughs> like 2019, I think, you know, like now, today, uh, we have more holistic view about well being, like a lot changed. You mm-hmm. know, it became a trend, especially during like COVID times. But at that point, I was like, it wasn't that much around that you know i was like okay what is this what am i now so i was even questioning myself uh but um pain is a big motivator and yeah. rid of that so uh so that's and i wouldn't say switched i would say rather like looking holistically um western medicine definitely has its own place and i'm still like questioning when something new comes in that's not you know proven uh, but I'm more open to experiment if it's not, you know, uh, if I don't feel any danger of it. Like meditation doesn't seem like it would have a harm. So why not give it a go? <laughs> yeah. So it was the first sabbatical. What about yeah. the second one? Um, so the sec- after the first one, it was also full of so much um, learning about myself and what I want in life. So that's when I decided I would switch to freelancing because, uh, for example, family is also important for me. But if I'm living abroad and working full time, 
I have to decide between family and like uh, home time or vacation. Like just like those kind of little things. And uh, uh, freelancing was kind of the answer to live the life that is aligned with my values. So I decided to that and also decided I would take a sabbatical every two, three years <laughs> to zoom out and look back. And at that point, it was like I was working for in the first sabbatical. I was working for 10 years and the most I have taken was two weeks and like six weeks or eight weeks. It was it seemed very long, but it's actually I think it's just human and normal to take that break, to have this like outer perspective to your life, like kind of like a checkpoint. Hmm. Um, yeah. So the second one was just because I promised to myself. And it was hard because this time the motivation wasn't coming from pain. It was more, <laughs> this is the way I live. I promise to myself, I'm a freelancer and I have a client and it's going well, they're paying well and they want to extend the contract. At that point, it meant that I had to tell them, look, I'm going on a sabbatical and also telling myself I'm aware this client might not go on when I'm back. So that was the hard part of taking it, but I knew good things would come if I took that time. And what did client tell you? Well, um, they said, can we still do maybe a couple of days? They kind of like ease in towards the sabbatical and that was fine for me. So I that time I went to Bali and um, I worked like for a week or two, like just a few days with them. Mm -hmm. So that that was fine and um the purpose of the second sabbatical was to now look back in my freelance life and decide because it was uh two three years at that point decide if i want to continue freelancing if i want to turn it into a different business what was going well what was not so kind of like a retro on my freelance life and my life overall and that time i combined the sabbatical with um um joining a community called uh, Unsettled. Mm -hmm. So it's for people who are working like freelance or entrepreneurs and they travel around together. So I joined them also to learn if, uh, you know, like how people are dealing with uh, running their own business or freelancing, especially globally. Um, like what are they doing with their taxes? How do they find new clients? You know, all those like freelance questions and Bali's, Bali, in Bali there are so many uh, people who are freelancing so that was the purpose of it and again it came back with so many good things uh, to me that sabbatical so how did each one impact your professional life the first one switching to freelancing and second one owning the niche which is well-being so designing with well-being and for well-being so even got into a further niche. Um, yeah, that was it. And more connections um, and more trust to myself. So it sounds like with every sabbatical, you're get, getting clearer and clearer vision what to do next. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, this like uh, bird's eye view on your life. And there's no pressure on deciding on anything immediately. So the decision kind of comes towards the end of the sabbatical anyway but clarity um is great but that it also needs an openness to that it might change now i'm saying well-being i have that declared maybe you know it will change in a year or in a couple of months but feeling aligned on what i do and why i do it how did you prepare both mentally and financially for yeah. those sabbaticals? Yeah. First one, again, because it's coming from sickness, <laughs> like it was just like going. Like, yeah. I, there was preparation. I even got my like yoga clothes like a day before. <laughs> but the second time was more intentional. Uh, so I made sure that I have uh, like savings that will, uh, you know, like keep me going in case I don't get a client for at least six months. Mm -hmm. um, so I made, I think that was the time I started making like financial plans of like, uh, 
how much should I hit if, to go to the sabbatical? So I made a goal for the year and I thought if I can get uh, clients and hit that target, then I could take two months off. And then in case I can't find anything when I'm back, I'm still good for like around half a year. Yeah. Uh, that had to be that way. Otherwise it's very stressful. And honesty is like when I was back, yes, of course I couldn't find a client immediately. It took a while, a couple of months. Like I had some ongoing clients, they came back, um, but like not, <clears throat> not in full speed immediately. So the, that mentally part, and so that was the financial part. Mm -hmm. And mentally, I was kind of speaking with friends and family, like, you know, just like uh, hearing myself what I want to do. That was helpful. Um, I journal and <laughs> now I also do tarot. <laughs> so, yeah, those kind of things that just help me mentally any, in any topic. Not so I feel like I feel like slowing down is important for sure, at least from what I hear from you. So let's jump a little deeper and go to why is slowing down and taking breaks important, especially for freelancers? Mm, well, I think uh, as freelancers, we are entrepreneurs. It's still like even if you're not working for a client for a while, it's running a business. So we have to own it and see it and to see that we need those breaks as if we are you know like working at some at a company otherwise it feels like kind of life is happening to us like we are not in control like i have a client now i'm busy and then like it, at the first years of my career it was like two different modes if i have a client and if i don't mm. and i wanted to get out of that and feel that i have a path and i know what i'm doing and sometimes I have clients and sometimes I don't. So uh, to get to that ownership and feeling that you're in control, we have to get comfortable with slowing down. How to understand that you have to slow down? Um, I think we like, like again, like working in house, we should give ourselves some time to take off because otherwise it's too late when you understand. <laughs> like if you understand that you need to slow down, you probably your body is giving signals. And like at that point, you should immediately slow down. Otherwise, it's going to get worse. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the part of it would be healing. So like I also had like some friends who uh, had burnout and we were talking a lot with uh, them as well about slowing down and taking a break so if it's at burnout level I've seen that it's taking almost like half a year sometimes a year to just get back to feeling healthy again so I think it's um, just our responsibility towards ourselves seeing this as a part of um, freelance working or overall working I had a conversation with different freelancers about what to do when you don't have a client. And many of them told that uh, it's a really good opportunity to slow down. Not in a way that you don't have to search for clients, but in a way that like take it easy, like go for a vacation, like learn something new, improve your skills while still doing this little bit of finding clients, uh, networking and talking to people. So I'm curious, how do you, what do you do when you don't have a client in this period? During sabbatical, I didn't look for a client, honestly, because that's also work. So like that was like clear taking time off, but it was networking because I was with this program called Unsettled. It wasn't the networking like I would do for like freelancing. It wasn't people that are from my uh, industry or like potential client. It was more like connecting to other freelancers. So yeah, but networking in a different way. Hmm. But I didn't look for actively for clients and gave a good break there. But, but you know, it still sounds like, um, it sounds like fun um fun work kind of not in a way that you are working but yeah this uh, fun networking and uh, i think that 
every time that you are doing things for fun, nah, maybe it doesn't even really feels like working. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a dangerous area. <laughs> You know, um, so now I'm working for like this company um, on workplace well-being and it has an assessment for employees uh, to see, like simply assess their well-being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did it to ourselves in that uh, startup um, and we talk about it. It turns out that we might, like people might tend to work overtime because they like the job. But no, that's not the way. So still work life balance is important. Even if you like it, there's life happening. So it's all about that balance. Uh, and the best is do the work, do the work that you like and enjoy it in work time and then have your <laughs> life as well. <laughs> I can imagine that, you know, some people hate going to a job like, no, I don't want to go to work. And other people like, no, I don't want to go home. I want to work more and more. Yeah, yeah, please do do pause, do pause, really. Yeah. And sometimes freelancers think that if they take a break, they will never find clients again. So you took two long breaks at least. So how to deal with these thoughts? Yeah, um, I've seen a pattern. So it took me around like two, three months, both times to get my clients back. So if... I'm not going to work in a sabbatical, adding the time that I'm going to look for clients on it. So if you look at it like that, the sabbatical is like maybe four months. Hmm. So like kind of like splitting, like when it's actual break and when it's a, again being back and like being active on LinkedIn and chatting with people while still like not being harsh to yourself. Um, so that could be helpful. So it sounds like you really had not two months of sabbatical, but like four or five months of sabbatical. Yeah, uh, exactly. if, if we are talking about this uh, work freelancing part. Yeah, but to me, like actually, like the taking break part was two months. Um, so I, I was off. I don't count the times that I'm not having an active client as off. That's the, that's the way. That's still working. Yeah. And it's still possible find clients after yeah. <laughs> taking a time. It's it's very important, you know, because some people think that if they have a client at this moment and if they stop working, they will never find clients again. They have this fear. And I feel like it's it's super important to tell like, hey, you will find a client. Like slow yeah. down, take this holistic view, like go deeper into yourself, go deeper into your career, understand what you're really for. And yeah. then you will find your clients. So yeah. And the other thing I find helpful is um, have like for me having the second passion. Now I'm also a yoga teacher. It's not mm. my primary um, job. It's really something I do because I'm passionate about it. And I also see it as a chance to, you know, uh, do teach yoga while I'm looking for clients. So that really helped with this mm. mental shift of on and off. Because I'm actually never off. It's just like what I do changes. And yeah. And then I'm happy that I have the chance to actually, you know, like teach yoga. Though during those like uh, looking for client times. That's exactly what you were talking about. That's a very dangerous zone, you know, when you still have fun and work even while having fun. So it sounds yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like, it's like, you know, because you have time free while looking for clients, like you can't really like eight hours search for a client. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. So what well-being practices do you do daily and how do they help you keep a work-life balance? Um. So meditation at least once a day, like five minutes, ten minutes every morning combined with breathing uh techniques and journaling including sketching uh so that's kind of like a, my half an hour morning routine or 45 minutes it can go longer if the day is free um so sketching i wanted to mention because what i uh have realized as creatives we expect creativity like need to mm. be fulfilled 
by our jobs, but as we progress in our career, it's not always the case. So, but we became like, at least I became a designer because I wanted to be creative. So kind of this like sketching and like morning journaling takes that pressure off the work and I'm owning my creativity without, you know, being a perfectionist or anything about it. So that's a part of the routine. Um, and then yoga, but not every day. Um, and meditation, maybe once again in the night, like before sleeping or midday to get that refresh. So those are like the daily ones. And then, um, yeah, tarot, I do time to time. That's more spirituality. Um, do you do yeah. it for yourself or for someone? Uh, myself and friends, <laughs> like if I feel like it. Uh, you know, I'm Turkish and like this like uh, Turkish coffee reading is kind mm. of a tradition. So I think that it connected with that part of me. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I feel like it's sort of a different podcast, but still, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to talk about this <laughs> later. So. <laughs> What is, what is one thing to do right away for someone who wants to gain more clarity and calm in their, li in their lives? Well, getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we really don't get bored. Like we tend to just do things. Whatever it means for you, getting bored. If med it's meditation, hmm. you know, just like having that time that you do nothing hmm. or being in a flow. It could be on a plane. I also get a lot of clarity on planes um, and it could be while biking, you know, just those moments that you're a bit like on the flow and doing doesn't feel like doing and um, just giving yourself permission for that and see what comes. You know, it's interesting. I've never, I've never thought about meditation in a way that to get bored because I tried meditation and I really got bored and I was like, ah, no, it's boring. I won't do this. But I feel like that's exactly the point that you have to get bored, you know, to, to let your brain work more. Yeah. See what happens, you know, like just bringing a bit curiosity on what comes if you're bored. What do you want to do <laughs> then? Yeah. And also another thing to gain clarity is like talking to people. Like I had many mentors in the, this journey, um, like both like meditation teachers, yoga teachers, but also uh, from the industry, um, mm. other design leaders that I've connected to. Uh, and that's always very helpful. How do you find main mentors? Um, for me, it took a while. Um, to find one that uh, it connected, I connected with, um, but I spread the word I, that I'm looking for a mentor, and and then I discovered like I knew, but I started looking into ADP lists and uh, mm. also where I'm mentoring as well. So I just tried multiple, a couple of mentors there. Um, yeah. So and then eventually I found people that I uh, connect and. Uh, get back for advice uh, again and again. Got it. You know, Pauline, I wish to have the sky is the limit, but time is the limit to our conversation. So the final question, what is your favorite food? What is my favorite food? Oh, <laughs> it's a Turkish food. <laughs> uh, it's like aubergine and inside there's minced meat hmm. called karnirik. Got it. And what is the best way to connect with you? Um, LinkedIn, uh, they can search for me on ADP list and also, yeah, to stay updated on my thoughts on well-being and design, I have this newsletter called, uh, design being on Substack. Got it. Pauline, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And it's been such a pleasure to hear and learn from you. Thank you, Yuri. It was such a pleasure to chat. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button on five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.